Hi crafters, this is Raquel with Paints and Glitter and today I'm just coming to you with a little bit of a different video. It's almost like a, a small update and VR. So I've been watching a lot of people share how they organize their supplies and what they're doing for the new year, etc, etc. And so I just wanted to share a little bit of my craft room, not the entire thing. Um, but here I wanted to show you how I store uh, different dyes that I get in or any kind of uh, new supplies that I might be getting in uh, stamps papers that sort of thing um, as well as the sentiments uh, dyes that tonic studios has or anything that I know I can make a quick um, card topper with um, that sort of thing I'll put in here and this little bin is a three-tiered bin from scrapbook.com you may have seen when I hauled that and I did share it. There's a little uh, freebie that I won from Tonic Studios. And here's some glue and um, this little bit of glitter. Over here, I just have another little acrylic bin. And this is where I just keep my stamp blocks, my stamp cleaner from Hero Arts. Uh, this is really nice. If you don't have one, if you use rubber stamps, you may want to grab one because you can really clean them very well. These are just my basic everyday inks and my clear Versamark. So for a quick sentiment um, that doesn't need a lot of sprucing up or for any heat embossing, I'll use those inks. And then my tiny little machine. It's so small, so it's easy to fit there. And I always have little pieces of washi tape stuck to them there. I do have a window ledge here, so I tend to keep plants up there um, and my brushes in a ball jar that I purchased. So over here I have my tools, just basic tools that I reach for. And then I call this my little dashboard. So if I do any die cutting and I know there's going to be all these little bits and pieces, I try to place them here because this is a foam pad and they tend to want to stay there just a little piece of magnet and then over here I just have a basket of Nouveau markers and aqua flow pens here's my Tim Holtz glass mat as you can tell and uh, my recent cards and that sort of thing um, my die cutting machine and over here I place my basket with the yucky uh, plates that I need for cutting over there is my water and alcohol bottle that I use for cleaning. I have an iPad, my small spellbinders machine, and I recently hauled these, which I did share. And these are beautiful uh, binders from Tonic Studios, as you can tell, that house a lot of dyes. It's They look small in pictures or videos but I promise you there's a lot of dyes in there and then yesterday my husband came home and he said that he had stopped at our local Aldi which here in the U.S. is a grocery store uh, with kind of a European style um, no frills <laughs> but he said that they had these trays for I believe they were seven dollars or something like that so I figured okay let me give them a try let me see if I like it and of course you can see what fits here these are just sequins and glitter and that sort of thing a couple of little sprays that I tend to use and um, that's just so wax melt or warmer whatever <laughs> for scent and there's my little 3d balloon but what I wanted to show you was that I also have this tier here, and this is meant for nail polish bottles. But as you can tell, you can fit Nouveau product there. I got that idea from a young lady on Facebook. So whoever it was, I can't recall her name, but I thank you so much. I did order two. However, my dear lovely friends at Amazon forgot to send in the screws and <laughs> the hardware for the second one. So I actually ended up having to return it. Now, this one was $15, that one was 7 but you see the difference of the stadium seating is what I would call it. I prefer this, so I'm hoping to get a second one so that I also have space to get more sprays and that sort of thing. And that is the extent of my Nouveau Drop collection, that little guy I made over there, and I keep him out because I worked hard on him. <laughs> and then on the second tier here, what I've done is that I like these pretty boxes 
from the dollar store here or Dollar General and you can see I recycled this one so if I give a gift to my family and it's my son or my husband I get to have the boxes back <laughs> and the reason being I'm sorry for shaking the camera but the reason being that you know we have to recycle these things okay ladies so what I did is that I placed some of my um, dear wooden stamps in here I'm, I'm vertically challenged so anyway so if you see here here I have some antique, <laughs> we're going to call them PSX stamps. So they can go in here because I know they're going to be uh, safe and not collecting dust, which in the past when I shared my room, you saw that I had a bunch of wooden stamps here on this entire shelving area. So what I've done is that I've put them away like this. I know what's in there. I know what's in here. These are just business cards. Um, I made this. I did share that this in a video. Okay, that's made with Tonic Studios dies. And back there is poor little Santa. Um, we just keep him back there because we know he's not, not real. <laughs> anyway, this here is an upcycled frame. And also, that is a, a table runner, handmade table runner. I like texture and I don't necessarily like busyness. So I just framed that because I thought it was really beautiful. And I just figured in the meantime, I would set that there because I have plans on using this shelf. And in this basket here, which I may replace with a different color basket, I'm not sure yet. These are all my Christmas dies and stamps and papers of late. Um, and then if you go even higher, I have older items that I've either made or been given or um, a box of cards that I can still use, uh, that sort of thing. So over here on the what's left of this shelving unit, which did come with the house, I do have many of my projects that I have kept. Uh, the majority, I would say 90% of what I make, I give away, sell, or, you know, gift, surprise people with, whatever. Um, but on this table here what i wanted to share if you're still with me and i do appreciate it if you are um is that i took another one of these baskets and these by the way i believe were from the dollar general or something like that very inexpensive um but here what i did was i was curating for valentine so i put a lot of little dies that i knew um would work for small valentine projects as you can see there i have older ones um that what I did was I figured anything that had a heart I could put here. They're not labeled because I don't bother with labeling um, the older items because I don't recall necessarily who made them. Because back when I used to first start die cutting, I didn't save the packaging and I didn't know who made what. I I literally had no reference of... Uh, brands or anything like that and then I discovered that through making videos on YouTube people wanted to know where did you get it and who made it so now I do keep the packaging um, I do keep this type of envelope from Sizzix because these are nice and sturdy um, if they come like this then I will keep the packaging and then I'll if I get a sleeve I'll put them in there but I do like to grab a magnet. Like, for instance, I know this is Tim Holtz. I just have to look at it tonight. If the item comes like this from Tonic Studios, uh, I know that I don't have to replace it with a different type of packaging necessarily because it will all be on a sleeve like this. Now, this is stuck on there with double-sided tape. That's how they come. However, if I want to, I can stick a magnet right onto that and that'll go right back into its own packaging. The other thing that I do is I have these inserts. Now I intend, I have every intention of getting more binders, just waiting for the right price. <laughs> and here's what I do uh, as well as a lot of other people is just to place the name on there. I also write the number of dies that I have with the packaging. Uh, and if it comes with stamps, then I will include that in the back. And the reason I say that is because sometimes the uh, die sets, and here's another, this is another tonic binder, if you're not familiar with this. Sometimes the packaging will 
say on the outside how many dies were included and sometimes it does not. So I've taken it upon myself to write the number of dies that's included with the kit. Um, and then if it has a stamp set, then I keep it in there. Um, so I did that for all of my Tonic Studios dies. Every single set that I have, I now know how many dies are in there. Like this says 26. So that way, if I need to verify, I can. You can buy these binders directly from Tonic Studios if you would like to. And you can buy the refills. And yes, they do come with magnets. Now, if that's not your thing, that's okay. I just wanted to put that out there. But as you can see in this basket, I also have my Tonic Studio stamp platform and my most used scoreboard and envelope maker. Okay, so that's what I use for card making. So that will stay there. I have other supplies on this table. I have my little mess my coffee but then I also have one of these I just picked up this bin at Hobby Lobby and it was five dollars and in here I have some supplies that I've recently been working with so whatever I have to make a video with a collaboration whatever then I can just throw everything in here but as you can tell um, these are brand new just got those absolutely lovely I, um, also found <laughs> these items so um, because I have some projects in mind then I will put those items here or if I have to make a video then I can put those projects or items there you know what I mean um, but I'm gonna show you one more thing because I make so many samples I often have a lot of leftover snippets of paper or um, embellishments and that sort of thing things that I've colored or cut cut out etc etc because there's no way that I could use them all up then what I've done is that I've gotten these little, um, basically plastic envelopes is what I would call them. You can get these at Hobby Lobby and they're quite inexpensive. And I've tried to separate them by category. For instance, this one is all flowers. So I can dip back in there if I need to, to make some more flowers. However, I've tried to separate them out and then put some in envelopes for flat rack. So there are groups on Facebook where you can share your leftover pieces of paper, any embellishments, that sort of thing, because there are people who do junk journaling or just different types of crafts. And instead of letting the items go to waste, then this is the system that I'm going to be working with. And of course I have my little scale here so I can make sure that um, I weigh my envelopes and that way I get the correct postage. Um, and then if you're curious, like me, <laughs> here's another bin. Um, and what I've done here if, is that I have separated out my UK brands, if you will. So what I've done is put anything that's Elizabeth Craft Designs, anything that is from Paper Discovery, one of my other favorite brands, uh, Daisy May Designs, um, Creative, something or other craft products. So anything that's from Craft Stash, basically. Um, there's another brand over here, Textures by Lou Collins. Uh, because I associate all of this with Craft Stash, and that's how my mind works, then I put it all in one separate bin, and this can go right into my unit over here, where I have things separated out the way that my mind is more likely to remember them. So I do separate out certain things by brand name, and then other things I separate out by the style, for instance, specialty card, the type of project that I might make with it. For instance, down here is my more expensive paper. Um, down there is a collection of uh, the Gorgeous Girl stamps that I haven't even used uh, of late, so I'm not sure if I'll keep them. Uh, that sort of thing. So this is very handy for me to go ahead and uh, organize items the way that I'm more likely to remember them. And I know it might not make any sense to anyone else, but for me, I have to work in visual category. Last but not least, here is a rolling cart. And on the very top tier is where I have my larger Tonic Studios dies. Most of them are labeled, as you can tell. And then what I've done is put the item number and the name. And then on some of them, because they're so elaborate, what I did is, 
and I'm going to try to find one to show What I did you. was, with some of the items, especially ones that I'm not yet very acquainted with because they're still quite new, what I did is that I took a picture of the actual uh, magnet base with all the dies on it, and I stuck that picture right on the magnet, as you see there. So I used my little HP printer for photos, and that way I have a frame of reference as to how to place these back so that I don't end up using or losing the dies. Um, and that's another way that I find that I will be able to organize my items uh, in a way that works for me because I'm very visual. So uh, I may be able to, for instance, categorize things by style of craft. For instance, I have all of my mini album dies on a rolling cart separate from everything else. However, the system's gonna work for me because despite the fact that I have the label with the number of dies, I also needed something a little more. And I saw on the website that there are pictures also of the die sets that are um, similar to what you will see on the back, just like this. So I will be able to also print something like this and add it to my packaging if need be, even though this doesn't say how many number of, for instance, the number of dies that are there. If I really need something like that, I can definitely do that as well. If you're curious, I have shared also a project with this die set and it's super The last cute. thing that I was going to share with you guys is how I have gone ahead and replaced Everything that I have in this tower, which used to be specialty papers, printed papers, that sort of thing, I now have all of my wooden stamps in this tower, which they're actually two towers, and a lot of these stamps were given to me and others I have collected through the years. So what I've done is put them here, and I'm sharing this to just to let you know that the best way to uh, house wooden stamps, if you're going to put them in more than one tier, or more than one layer is to face them wood block to wood block okay that way you don't get ink especially if you get them uh, and they're older they've been loved um, you don't want to have that ink go on to the next stamp so uh, if you do it like this it's going to preserve the, uh, the the beautiful image that's been placed on that and so what I've done is again I created my own categories I went ahead and did all florals here. Everything up here is either heart related or uh, friendship or love, that sort of thing. And then here I have mostly all backgrounds with the exception of some little tiny ones, but I can create backgrounds with those. And um, I also have house mouse stamps all in here. I think I might have two tiers of that. And then I think I have like teddy bears or something like that. But I've also gone ahead and recycled my tonic so boxes. If I want to craft for a particular season, I now have the wooden stamps housed in these boxes. And then if I need to uh, post some for sale on Etsy, I can quickly get them here it as well. It has been great to figure out a way to organize my items so that they are all in one place rather than several different places around my craft room. I hope that this has been helpful to you. If it has, please feel free to leave a comment or a thumbs up. I would truly appreciate it. And if you're new to my channel, I welcome you. And as I always say, I hope that you can be inspired and be blessed. And I thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.